Hello, in this video we're going to look at perfect competition, in particular profit maximization with production functions, and find which functional forms of production functions work and which ones don't. So here's a production function. One input, L is units of labor, Q is the quantity of output, and we're going to just maximize profit. Again, this is a perfectly competitive firm, so the price is given and the wage here will also be given to the firm. The firm operates in a competitive input market. And Q is the quantity of output. So substituting in for Q, L to the one half. And now we're going to take the derivative of this profit function with respect to labor. And we get the following. We're maximizing, so we're setting this equal to zero. And we're going to solve for L. So moving this L to the minus one-half down into the denominator. Multiplying through by L to the one-half power. And then dividing through by W. And finally squaring both sides of the equation. We have our labor demand equation. And this equation makes sense. An increase in the wage, so as W gets bigger down here in the denominator the left-hand side will fall, so as the wage increases, the firm will hire fewer workers. On the other hand, as the price of its output good goes up, if the firm can command a higher price in the market, the firm would want to produce more output and therefore hire more workers. So you get a positive relationship between the output price and the number of workers hired. So that labor demand makes sense. Now let's look at this production function. Here L is raised to the power of 2 instead of 1 half, setting up our profit function, revenue minus cost, substituting in L squared for Q, and now taking a derivative, setting that derivative equal to 0, and solving for L, we get the following result. This labor demand doesn't make sense. Here, as wages go up, the firm would want to hire more workers. That seems kind of strange that the labor demand curve would slope upwards. Also notice if the price of the output good were to increase, if P got bigger, the firm would want to hire fewer workers. So this really doesn't make any sense here. Let's look at this numerically. A perfectly competitive firm faces a price equal to $100, the wage is $10, and the production function is given by Q equals L to the one-half power. Setting up our revenue minus cost and making our substitutions in for the price is 100 the wage is 10 and our production function Q is L to the one-half. Taking our derivative, setting that derivative equal to 0, and we're going to solve for L. Just moving some things around. Dividing through by 10, and now squaring both sides, L equals 25. Let's check the second order condition to make sure we're at a maximum. So we're going to take the derivative of a derivative. Uh, we're going to take the derivative of this expression right here. And we get back minus 25L raised to the minus 3 halves power. Evaluating that L at 25 we see that the sign of this derivative here is going to be negative. We've got this negative out in front. So, so because this derivative has a negative sign, we are indeed at a maximum. So here's problem two. The firm faces a price of $50. The competitive wage is $100, and Q equals L squared. Setting up our profit function. Taking the derivative. Setting that derivative equal to 0 and solving for L, L equals 1. Let's check our second order condition. Here it is going to be positive, so we're actually going to be at a minimum here. So our second derivative here, derivative of 100L minus 100 is just 100. And because this is greater than 0, we're actually at a minimum. We're at a local minimum here. So when L equals 1, profits are minimized. So if L equals 1, we could just evaluate the profit function by plugging 1 in for L, and we get minus 50. If L equals 0, profits are actually higher. So if we were to produce less, output our profits would be higher. In this case, it would be 0. 
And if we were to produce more than one, profits would actually be higher. So L equals one is indeed a minimum. This firm's profits continue to rise with increased output. This firm's profits will always go up if it produces more. The firm should produce an infinite amount of output in this case. However, this doesn't make sense in a perfectly competitive market. So for perfect competition, just in general, this, this exponent here, A, has to be less than 1 to find a profit-maximizing output level. Marginal product, in other words, must be diminishing. If A here, this exponent, exceeds 1, it doesn't make sense. As we first showed, the labor demand curve is completely wrong, and the firm would want to produce an infinite amount of output. I'll do a separate video about what happens when alpha equals 1. All right, I'm going to stop here.